Precise series in the building right here with the beautiful Tamiko Hope. How are you? I'm good, pretty lady. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, we're at Patchwork Studios and you just had a workshop. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, um, I have had a very long-standing relationship with Patchwork. Obviously being a publicist, I've come right. to the studio a lot with right. some of the artists and producers because I work with a lot of producers. And um, just over the years, they've been very good to me. Mm -hmm. And when I told them I wrote a book, they were very supportive. And yes. They were like, you know, let's get you in here for a workshop. Right. I participated in a, um, what was it? It was a uh, panel they did. I think it was called um, uh, Music 101 or something oh, okay. like that. And um, Music University 101. Oh, okay. And I participated in that. And we've just been building so ever since. Then, yeah. Right, right. They're, yeah, awesome. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. They have a major, major name here mm -hmm. um, in Atlanta. So, can we just know a little bit about Tamiko Hope and what you do, what you've contributed to Atlanta and the music industry so that a lot of indie artists can know, you know, um, your work and how they can reach you to, to get advice from you? Yeah, well, I honestly kind of look at it the other way around. Atlanta has given me so much. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I um, started interning at LaFace, which is where I pretty much got my foundation right. in the music industry. As an intern, right? As an intern. intern. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I was around so many wonderful people. I had a lot of empowering female mentors because, as you know, being in the music industry as a woman sometimes can be hard. It can be difficult. <laughs> so she gave me a lot of, uh, you know, game in the sense of, how to navigate in right. such a male-dominated industry. So um, Atlanta has imparted, you know, so, you know that into me. Um, I was able to work with, you know, Outkast and Usher and Goody Mob and that whole of Face family. This goes on and on. Yes, and on. it does. <laughs> and so um, I, I forgot the question, but <laughs> but um, but I um, have definitely enjoyed working with a lot of the seven artists. I've worked with Rocco and. Um, you know, uh, Shawty Lowe and Big Boy, you know, um, I mean, I mentioned Outkast, but yeah. Big Boy was who I really, really connected with. I've done work with Andre separately, mm -hmm. but um, I would say Big Boy gave me a really good, um, you know, foundation here. And um, also Dallas Austin, he gave me a shot working with his group. Big Backwoods. names in the A. Yeah, like, <laughs> you know, and, and it's just been a great city right, for me, right. and, um, and I've just honored to be able to give back in a small way mm -hmm. in the sense of doing things like this workshop yes. and you know the book and everything and it was a great turnout it was a it great was. turnout they, they said it was turnout. if i can pat myself on the go back. ahead go ahead <laughs> it was the biggest turnout they had i mean they've only done three <laughs> but it was the biggest turnout they had and i have one guy he drove from uh, little rock Arkansas. Oh, uh, shout out to Little Rock. That's where my family from okay yeah. well he y'all have that passion yes because um he um, yeah drove nine hours. And speaking of that wow. passion, I remember you of course <laughs> in the play, the Cheesecake Boys and the yes, Diva. Yes, yes. And um, your mom. As I said, it's a small world. When I knew small. about this, I was like, oh my gosh, yes, Tamiko, because yeah. you did PR for the Cheesecake Boys and the Diva. And I remember your resume from then and mm -hmm. everything you bought to the show then, and it was a great turnout. So, so this is like a reunion, right? You again. Yes, it yeah. is. It is. So <laughs> let's get in and talk about this new book. Okay. that you have for the Indies? Yes. yes, I mean, I built, again, my career working with independent artists. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Backwoods was independent, even though they were with Dallas Austin, and so was Shawty Lowe for the most part until he um, hooked up with Warner Brothers. But um, in addition to working with so many independent artists, I also, of course, with social media, Yes. you see so many people, you know, doing things, and you're like, oh my god like that's not how you get attention that's not mm. how you get your record played and um or people send me questions and i'm like that's not how you approach somebody right, right. and 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 even from the positive standpoint you would see so many people working so hard but then they wouldn't get any traction so it was like let me see you know you how i can you know utilize my knowledge right. and and impart that to you know the indie right. community so is that what made you want to write the book because it, of all the feedback you were getting from people with yeah that was um, you know the main reason and I'm a big reader mm -hmm. and I'm always open to learning new things and it was like I would read so much good information and even have good conversations with some of the people that are featured in the book right. like Shaheem Reed from well I met him at uh, MTV and I have a guy by the name of Tuma Basa from Revolt mm -hmm. um, all these people we would have these you know th these long dialogues about 
what the industry, you know, a lot of these new artists weren't doing and what they were doing right. incorrectly. So I was like, you know, I should put this in a book and let them know from these insiders that are in the music industry some of the things that they can do to, um, you know, help them along in their career. Yes, yes. Indies, you have to go and get this book, The Indie Insider, 10 Key Facts from Music's Industry Insiders. That's okay? right. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give to indies just off the top of your head um, for getting their music out there? Build your fan base. Mm. That is the, mm. the best thing I think you can do is to build your fan base. Yes. I think a lot of times people, you know, look outside of their own community for fans and followers when they should work from the inside out. Work with people that want to work with you and feed that group right. of people first and start, you know, like start a little fire there, like a little right. spark there. And if you have a good message, the talent and the consistency, it'll, yeah, it'll spark, it'll spark. So being that you have, you know, this extensive resume, you started off at the Face Records, what do you see the differences now from the industry then <laughs> to now? It's so easy, hard <laughs> development. It's the number one thing. I think that a lot of artists are missing these days. Um, you know, you have some of these artists that have a hit record, mm -hmm. and you know they're overnight like they're on MTV and they're Man. on BET, and they can't, you know, they can't articulate themselves, um, or you know they don't. It, it's like so much fame and success that they haven't, you know, taken the time to nurture you know right. their, their other skills right. so it's like you know while they have all this exposure they can't really take the advantage of it as much as they could right. had they you know been through some sort of artist development process and you instead know, of just jumping and so, jumping yeah up. I mean obviously you know you want to make great music that's right. key you got to have great music right. you have to have a great product but also you know while you're on your grind Make sure you're doing other things to develop your skills so when that opportunity does hit, not only can you take advantage of it, but you can also go further right. you know, in your career instead of being that one hit wonder that you, or a two right. hit wonder. Right. So that's it. Um, I, you know, I, just, I know some artists from other states, other cities who are like, how can I get shows in Atlanta? How can I do this? How can I do that? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, look, you got to be in the city. You just got to come here and put yourself out there. And that's true. I mean, it's kind of like... Um, the woman that created Girlfriends, um, mm. that was on BET, also mm -hmm. uh, being Mary Jane, yes. her name is Mar Brock Akil, and I remember she was in, I think it was Ebony Magazine, or Essence, yes, okay. Essence Magazine, and she had her address, I think, in there, but I wrote to her, uh -oh. and I was like, you know, I want to be a writer, and, you know, I want to write, you know, scripts and stuff, what should I do? And she wrote me a long letter back. And oh. this was before like email was really popular. Oh, okay. it was old fashioned. <laughs> wow, but she cool. wrote me back and she was like, Well, if you want to write, you know, for TV, you need to be in Hollywood. You need to move to California. And um, I say the same thing about a lot of artists. Obviously, you want to build your fan base in your hometown, but if you really want to, you know, work within a certain segmented popular you know if you right. want to target a certain right. you know group of listeners right. you have to move to that where area. those yeah where right. those opportunities are especially if your city is not really doing a lot because you can only do so much in a small city if you know if it's, it's right yeah, right if it's not right. really providing the opportunities that you need to get right. to the next level now Atlanta being such a major city mm -hmm. it seems like for some they may feel that the competitiveness you know Will, is what will cause them to not maybe get shows or to not get as much feedback because everybody has a slight fan base in Atlanta. You know what I mean? Just because it's so big, it's one of the biggest cities right now for music, especially indie indie music. So, you know, I, I'm hearing and seeing shows all over the city all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because majority of the people that are at these shows or in these shows, they come from Mm -hmm. other places mm -hmm. other places like it seems like those are more of the people that are here when you have your own people in Atlanta who don't take advantage mm -hmm. of what's right here for you right um mm -hmm. and Atlanta being one of the meccas to me for music I mean you you've been in this in this field in this industry you were born and raised in Atlanta right for the most part I was born in Atlanta but I was raised 
I mean, technically, uh, between Memphis, Columbus, Georgia, oh, okay. and Cartersville, Georgia. Oh, okay. And when I went to school at West Georgia, right. I moved to Atlanta after. Right. So, yeah. So, um, I'm, I'm going all over the place here because okay. I just feel like me. So, after LaFace, you started your editorial and your PR firm. Mm -hmm. What made you want to start your own? Firm. Like how was how was that whole process? Um, well, actually, me and another girl, actually from LA, mm -hmm. um, we started a company together. But what happened was, she, was well, she actually her the PR company she worked for in LA was contracted out by the face to help with a lot of artists or whatnot. And so we met during Goody Mob's project. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we were like, okay, we'll join forces. And but she ended up kind of going into like the neo soul lane. Uh -huh. And while I like neo soul music, like on my Sunday <laughs> or whatever, I'm really days like, like this. And it's days raining. like this. Right, right. But I'm really like a you know a thugged out type of you know NWA and you know Me all too. that type I of like you that know, type hood music. music. <laughs> but I mean I am diverse. I like yes. Sarah McLaughlin. I like yes. you know Nirvana. Like yes. I can do it all. But, you know, but what I listen to on a day-to-day -day right. is usually like hip-hop. Right. So, all that to say, I then, you know, launched my own company and, um, you know, started working with, you know, really who I could work with. But I was really blessed because of, you know, all the people that I've met through with Faze. Right. And I was able to kind of start with, you know, Good Bob and them. Steve. Right. Exactly. And, of course, you know, at that time they were pretty big in the city. Yeah. Goody so, Mob was like the, the thing in Atlanta. Thing. And so it led to other people like, yo, if you work with Goody Mob, you should you know, work with us. And so it kind of led to other things. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so for indies, um, what do you feel they will be able to get from this book that will be able to kind of be like a guideline or timeline, you know, for them to be able to have a... Well, I think you said it. You said a guide, and that's really so, what right, it for is. Them. And it's one of those type of books where I kept the information pretty concise mm -hmm. because I wanted people to be able to really digest it, right. you know, easily. Mm -hmm. But then also to be able to reference it back, back like when they need to, yeah, exactly. Because um, we did, you know, the seminar I just did mm -hmm. a workshop. Um, there is a book that I read years ago called um, "How to Win Friends and Influence People," mm -hmm. and through conversations that I had, I was like. I forgot that was in that book. I need to go back and read it. Right, right. So even though you know you you know will read it once, you'll go back to it over and over and over again. I feel yeah. to be able to just continue to keep that knowledge and those ideas at right. the forefront of you know your mind right. as you you know navigate throughout the industry. And one thing I want to a point I want to make too about the book is that I think it can be applied for any creative yeah definitely know, professional definitely so a fashion designer mm -hmm. or a stylist or for me as well a, a model well, yeah. or whatever yeah. yeah I think you can kind of apply some of those principles to what it is that you know you right. do right mm -hmm. well is there anything else that you would want to let the people know about yourself anything that you want indie artists to know artists in general. Um, you know what? Stay faith filled. <laughs> Do not give up. I think yes. that you know a lot of times. You know, I understand the frustration. I understand the inconsistency in money. Like Ooh. who knows that better? <laughs> I know that. So I mean, I you know, Robin, what do they say, Peter to pay Paul or whatever that saying yes. is. Like taking money from here to pay this. Like I know about that struggle. So yeah. um, just keep going. You know, continuously fill yourself with information that's stimulating yes and will keep you in a you know going in a motivational and positive direction surround yourself with other people that are moving in that direction doing the same thing doing the same thing and even people that are either better than you or on another level than you so right. you can also get better i remember right. reading something about they were saying if you want to learn how to play better tennis don't play with somebody as good as you play with somebody better so My you can learn yeah. yes that's smart man <laughs> <laughs> so um you know just being you know you know motivational to, you know these indies right. you know because i know how hard it is yes um and then i'm working on my second book yes. Yes. can you tell us the title um it's gonna be you know of course indie insider and i'm thinking actually i'm not even gonna do five things but there it's gonna be very long chapters okay but um about how to create buzz and i already got um a young lady from def jam 
to contribute to the book. Uh, oh, Fadia. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited about that and a few other people that are contributing information to it. So I think it also, and, and these are people that are, I wouldn't necessarily say inaccessible, but they don't too much give out information, right, you right, know, right, for right. Um, specifically, you know, how to do right. certain things. So I think, you know, it'll help. It will, yeah. yeah it'll help these artists and, um, yeah. you know, realize their dreams, hopefully. Right. Know, or, or anybody, like I said, any creative. Yeah. Anybody can get feedback from this. Mm -hmm. this book, I'm sure. Yeah. So how can the indies reach you? Um, definitely by uh, social media. Social media. <laughs> um, everything for me is at Tamiko Hope. T A M I K O H O P E. And um, yeah, and my website is www.word dash ink ink okay. com, and, and where can they get this wonderful book at amazon.com yes yes <laughs> if you go to amazon then they can put in my name or they can put in the title uh indie insider 10 key facts she um, comes up you can google insiders. her yes. learn everything you need to know about her. yes it's a small investment it's less than a cup of coffee or a large what I get is a skinny vanilla latte. It's less, <laughs> it's less than a grande or very. But it's worth so it's much worth more. It's worth so, so much, much more. more yes. And that's the thing. You have to invest in yourself. Yes. Um, have to invest in yourself yeah. so and in your career so yeah. yeah definitely yeah and i look forward to feedback too yes, yes you know yes, definitely look forward you. to feedback well thank you so much Ms. thank Tamiko, you for so coming much. and it it's was great to see you again great to see you. hopefully it's an honor and i'm sure we'll be seeing each other again from here yes and um you know i look forward to seeing you on what broadway yes. maybe yeah, yeah. 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 So hosting somebody's tv show right? or something <laughs> right, right something in front of the camera yeah yes ma'am yeah. thank you thank you definitely it was good to see you again good to thank see you too thank you all right y'all this is brooke tiara in Patchwork Studios with Precise Sears, and we're out.